Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone, to this first episode of English TV Live. My name is Jacob, and I am here with Lloyd. Lloyd, what's going on? How are you doing, everybody? Very nice to see you. As Jacob said, my name is Lloyd. His name is Jacob. And uh, happy to be here, Jacob, on English TV Live, the first ever episode, which is pretty cool. And it nearly didn't happen. It nearly didn't happen. We're going to talk about that in a second here. But to begin, just to give you guys some clues as to what you'll be learning today, we're going to talk about a proverbial phrase that you can use in a situation that Lloyd and I experienced today. Uh, and we're also going to talk about the best way that you can apologize to someone if you have to cause inconvenience in someone else's life. But to begin, Lloyd, why don't I pass things over to you and why don't you tell everyone who's watching a little bit about your situation and about what happened to you over the past 24 hours? Well, I think it was le less than 24 hours, really. So Jacob and I had planned a nice lesson for today. We were going to talk. The original plan was to talk about uh, introductions in English, right? Giving introductions in English. Uh, however, this was about, what, five hours ago, six hours ago? I received a um, a text message, a WhatsApp message from my landlady at this apartment, and she said, "Oh yeah, by the way, by the way, uh, tonight there's going to be a power cut, a maintenance, a scheduled power cut at the apartment building. So don't worry about that." So I was like, "What? The okay, hold on." So I checked the time of this power cut, and it was the exact same time as our lesson. So then I. Um, I freaked out a little bit, you could say. That's a good little expression. I freaked out. I sort of panicked. I was like, what, the, what, uh, what are we going to do? So if I disappear at some point in time, that will be the reason. Because apparently there's supposed to be a power cut today at this, um, right now, at this apartment building. However, as I told Jacob, apparently... There's a generator, an electric generator, which kicks in in this situation. So touch wood, you know the expression? Touch wood. I don't want to tempt fate, but as it stands, which means right now, I have power and I have internet and I'm talking to you. But it's possible that at any moment I could, I could uh, disappear. And I'm going to be touching wood over here in Canada as well. So I wanted to show you guys to begin what Lloyd sent me this morning. You can actually see the message that he sent me. And I'm using Google Hangouts now, which I've never used before, but I'm gonna try my best to share my screen with you. So this is a message that I received from Lloyd this morning on Facebook. He said, just received a message that today only there is going to be a power outage from 11 to 12. Perfect timing, can't believe it. I'll have to try and find a coffee shop or something, but the internet sucks at coffee shops here. It doesn't get more unlucky than this. And I have the word sucks underlined here because it's a nice slang word for you to know. Lloyd and I know each other fairly well right now, so I wouldn't use this word if you were speaking to someone who you were unfamiliar with. It's kind of a casual slang word, but it basically means that something is really bad. So he's saying the internet sucks, it means the internet is really bad. And let's talk about a proverb that feels very appropriate to use in this situation. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. That's the title of this episode, and that is what we're speaking about right now. Lloyd, do you want to explain this phrase for everyone watching? <clears throat> well, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, but my understanding of this expression is, so lemons in this case is, um, is a difficult situation. So if life gives you lemons, you know, life is not, uh, life's not perfect. Obviously, we have a lot of difficult situations which happen in our daily lives. So from time to time, you can experience some difficult moments like I did today, getting this message about the power cut. Uh, but... If you get the, but you have to see it as an opportunity, I guess. <laughs> um, and in the case of a lemon, what do you do? You make lemonade. So making the best, that's another expression, making the best of a bad situation. 
Yeah, I would agree. I would definitely agree. And for me too, I th when I hear this expression, what comes to mind is turning your weaknesses or turning things that limit you into strengths. And I, I have an example for you guys. I actually left a link in the description of this video to a scene from one of my favorite shows of all time, arguably the most popular American sitcom of all time. It's a show called Seinfeld. And Lloyd, have you ever seen Seinfeld before? I've, uh, I've sort of, here's another good expression. I'm full of good expressions today. Uh, I've dipped in and out. I've dipped, you know, dipped. Usually, you, what would you dip usually? Maybe some carrots. Or something. Yeah, I was going to say carrots. I'm the healthy one, obviously. So you dip something. Uh, you put it into sauce, for example. But if you dip in and out of a TV show, it means you don't watch every episode, but you watch it from time to time. So I have seen quite a lot of Seinfeld. Yeah, seen quite a few episodes of Seinfeld. But it's not uh, not a show that I've watched religiously. I haven't watched it religiously. Like, for example, Friends, for example, I could probably, I've seen every episode. Or Peep Show. Both of us are, are fans of Peep Show. Maybe the audience is not familiar with that. I'm, yes. I've watched it. But, so it's, it's a, it's a, I've seen it, but it's not my top show. But it's well, good. There's, there's a show, or, or sorry, there's an there's a character in the show. His name is George Costanza, and I'm going to give you an example of how George Costanza turns lemons into lemonade. And again, the link is in the description of this video if you want to watch the actual scene. But George Costanza is someone who, at this point in the show, is quite unhappy with how his life is going. He's unemployed. He's living with his parents. He doesn't have a girlfriend. He, he He's really just unhappy about where he's at in life. And so in this scene, he goes to a coffee shop with his friends and he's complaining about life. And he's talking about how every instinct he's made, he has, every decision that he's made has been wrong. And while he's explaining all of this, while he's complaining, he notices a pretty girl across the room who smiles at him. And his friends encourage him to go speak to her. And he starts complaining about how he can't do that because of his circumstances. Like I said, he doesn't have a job. He lives with his parents. He's not feeling too confident about where he's at. Uh, but anyways, his friends encourage him and he decides to do the opposite of what he's done in the past, which would be to sit and sulk. There's a nice word for you to sulk is to kind of feel bad about yourself and about your situation. So anyways, George Costanza, he gets up, he walks over to this pretty girl, and he proudly announces with such confidence that his name is George, he's unemployed, he lives with his parents, and he just introduces himself like that. But because of how confidently he speaks, this girl is very attracted to him. And what he does is he kind of takes everything that's that's gone wrong in his life and he uses it to his advantage. He he owns it, if you will. So there's an example of someone someone turning lemons into lemonade. And that's what Lloyd and I are trying to do right now with this episode. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a clip of that then? I do. It's in the um it's in the description of this video so oh okay I, I thought we were gonna watch it now okay all right so if we want to watch it then we can watch it after after the show that's a good expression though so to own something right um if you have some weakness or something which is which maybe other people might not be so proud of but you know it's, it's something you can't change so it's better just to own it to own it, you could own own the truth as well. If uh, in, in in George's case, he's quite a short guy, right? So instead of complaining about it, you could say, "Yeah, I'm short," or what, whatever it happens to be. Yeah, I'm living with my parents. So owning something—that's a good expression. So you know, you take ownership of that thing. You don't let other people, because if you don't take ownership, then what? I guess other people could tease you about it. But if you take ownership of it, then it kind of loses its power. Right for other people to to use against you. Yeah, when you were talking about being short, I, well, I mean, I'm short myself, and that's something that I've had to own, or I've decided to own, I guess, in my own life. But I was also thinking about um, I for, I'm, I hope I don't mess up his name. The actor Vern Troyer, I think. Do you know him? 
Yes, yeah, you know, he passed away a few weeks ago. Exactly, yeah. I think that's why he came to mind. So he's the actor who I think was most famous for his role in the movie Austin Powers. And he is incredibly short, but he he owned it. And he turned that weakness into an advantage and he made a, a career out of it, really. Yeah, so he was, I think you just said he was mini me. Yeah, so all those people, well, Austin Powers fans out there, mini me. Yeah, he didn't complain about it. He didn't say, oh, why am I so sh short? He made a whole career, a very successful career, out of being the short guy. So he owned it. He owned his, uh, in this case, his height and his situation. Exactly. Um, so let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk now about if you are the person who has to give someone else lemons, so to speak, in life. You received a, a letter, I believe, from your landlord a few hours ago. Yeah, so so uh, in this case, yeah, I, the lemons I received was that that news that about the uh, about the impending impending means something's coming soon. The impending power cut, and the person who gave me the lemons was the landlady, and in this case, the lemon <laughs> was the letter. Now we have well, we have a little section from the letter which we're just going to look because there's a slight little grammar mistake in there. And so we're just going to take a look at that. Oh, yeah. here you go. So you can see this, right? Um, if you can see this on the screen now. So this is this was the lemon that was dealt to me, the lemon that was given. So I received this, and I thought, oh my goodness, I have a live show with Jacob on English TV Live at eleven thirty p.m. <laughs> but from eleven p.m. until twelve o'clock, there's going to be no power. So I was thinking, okay, as you saw my message to my my message to Jake, Jacob, I was thinking, okay, I have no power, so I'm going to have no lights. I'm going to have no internet. Uh, I could maybe go to a coffee shop, but I think they're all going to be closed because it's very late here in Philippines. And the internet at the coffee shops in this country is not the best. So I was thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm totally screwed. That's another word. You could, if you're in a very bad situation and there's almost nothing you can do, you can say, I'm screwed. I'm screwed. Um, or it sucks. Exactly, it sucks. Now, in the comments section, while you guys are watching this, see if you can spot the errors in this one sentence. We apologize for inconvenience. This activity may have caused you. In the comment oh. section, let us know what you see. And Lloyd and I are going to jump over. We're going to say hello to all of you. But just to, um, just to, this is the first episode of English TV Live, so we're going to be trying out new things along the way. But we're going to treat these live episodes as more of a as more of a broadcast, like we're doing right now. So we're going to treat it kind of like a conversation. Um, we're not going to interact as heavily with everyone who's commenting. Uh, we're going to try and focus on making this more of a broadcast, like I said, but see if you can spot some of the errors in the passage that I just showed you or the sentence that I just showed you. I see Rodrigo, or sorry, Tatiana, has spotted one of the errors, and that is caused. That is correct. Nice work, Tatiana. Yeah, and, I, it's, actually, it's actually kind of funny. Sorry to interrupt. But um, when I received, maybe it's because I was panicking, I was sort of in a, I, uh, my head wasn't thinking clearly at that moment. But when I read the letter, I actually didn't pick up on, pick up on, to pick up on something means to notice something. I didn't actually pick up on these grammar mistakes until Jacob pointed them out. So it's kind of funny. Uh, especially when, I think when you read something quickly, you don't notice these mistakes so much. However, there are two mistakes here. So let's go back to the screen and take a look at it one more time. And I'll show you the the errors in a moment here. By the way, very uh, very nice for thank you to everybody for joining. I can see we've got lots of people watching here. Great to have you here. And by the way, we're going to be here. Our goal for you, for English TV Live is to come live from Monday to Thursday at the same time every day. So Right. You're going to at the same time every day. That doesn't make any sense. We're going to come live Monday to Thursday at the same time. And that will be the goal to start. Let's take a look at these errors, though. So as Tatiana pointed out, caused should be may have caused you. 
And we do need something before inconvenience. Okay, so we apologize. Most often you'll hear someone say, we apologize for any inconvenience this activity may have caused you. Or we apologize for the inconvenience this activity may have caused you. But yeah. you do need something before inconvenience there to make it sound quite natural. And Lloyd, would you say that this is the probably the best way to apologize to someone for causing inconvenience? Well, I, I would say that this is the way you would the way you would talk to somebody in a more formal situation. So in this case, it is the apartment building, which is apologizing to well, not only to me, but to all of the, the tenants, right? The tenants, the people who live here. Um, so in a formal situation, so I, we apologize for any inconvenience that this may have caused. You could also say for inconveniencing, right? You could also say it like that. We're sorry for inconveniencing, if you wanted to change it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, in a formal situation, you would probably say it like this. We're sorry for any inconvenience that we caused. But I wouldn't say that in a, a casual situation. So if, if I was apologizing to Jacob, for example, which I'm sure is going to be a common occurrence, uh, then I wouldn't say it like that to Jacob. Right? I wouldn't say, Jacob, I am sorry for any inconvenience that I may have caused you. You know, that sounds a little bit over the top, OTT, over the top. So um, in a formal situation, it would be good, especially in a written form, in a letter, in an email, if you're apologizing to your, uh, to your customers or something like that. Exactly. I, uh, I would agree there. All right, you guys. So Lloyd and I right now are going to head over in about 10 minutes to our private group for members of English TV Live. Right now we are running a trial version of a private group for English TV Live. And what we're going to do in that private group is we're going to talk about some expressions that Lloyd could have used to describe how he felt when he discovered the news that there was going to be a power outage tonight in the Philippines. So we're going to head over there. We'll be back live tomorrow at the same time. And Lloyd, I don't think there are any scheduled power outages at that time. Well, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that so far the lights are on. The internet seems to be working. I think you can hear me. But I know, to the best of my knowledge, it's only today. I think it's maybe tomorrow as well, but it's in the wee hours, the wee hours, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., so that is not an issue. But hopefully, cross fingers, it's only today. And, and it looks like we've, we've managed to, to escape it. Touch wood. So in the comment section, you guys, why don't you do one thing for us, and we'll come back and we'll respond to you guys. Why don't you tell us about a time when life gave you lemons. We learned about this expression today. Remember, when life gives you lemons, it's speaking about when life gives you problems, when you have an unfortunate situation that you have to deal with, something that you weren't planning for that happened. Tell us about a time when life gave you lemons and how did you deal with it? Did you make lemonade? What happened? Lloyd, anything else to add? Uh, no, that's about it. Yeah, we'd love to see your example, your, your real life example sentences of of that type of those type of situations we'll be we'll check out in the comments and uh you know maybe make some corrections or, or just enjoy your stories <laughs> absolutely and we are if you are watching right now and if you are a member of the english tv live members group the trial version that we are running head on over to english tv live if you'd like to join the wait list we do have a wait list up for people who want to become part of the community once we do launch it to the public. Head over to EnglishTVLive.com and fill out your name and email into the form. Click Submit and you'll be registered on the wait list. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you tomorrow at the same time. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.